You too, it's Ryan Phillips. My Little Pony reviews. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is with these boxes? Guys, this is not a My Little Ponies, I hope. That would be awkward. Maybe it's a flying My Little Pony. It could be. Hey, don't tempt the people. Oh, sorry. Uh, Lulin, something or another. Okay, this is a kid's gift, whatever that means. Okay, we've got some packaging in here. Oh yeah, it is the X26. Look at this, amazing. Honey, if you could just read us those safety warnings, please. Mm -hmm. Sure, it says languages. choking hazard, small parts, not for children under three years. Why didn't you read the other languages? <laughs> All right, so this, this is uh, Lulin. X26, it's a four channel pressure fixed position hovering drone, which is also known as a barometer. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Ooh, magnetic closure. That's gonna be oh, cool. enjoyed for 30 seconds before we take this out. Oh, look at this. We have, we have cages around them. These are geared rotors or props in this case. Looks like brushed motors, rubber on the bottom. Okay, and then there's a release here. Ooh, get you to the battery. That's pretty sweet. Looks like a different type of connector. I do not like that at all. We're gonna see what goes on. Looks like a power button up here. So as you guys can see, this thing is not gonna take long to unbox. So that's pretty sweet. Just gonna grab these four little holes here. Pull this box out. There is a manual that's located in the bottom. Uh, ooh, that's gonna be fun to get out. There it goes. It's not folded. We always prefer that. Let's see what goes on here. English is one through 22, one through approximately page 22. Okay, so we can read. Okay, that's good, we're glad we did that. That'll help a lot. We're gonna pop this up, open this out. Transmitter fits, everything goes in the box, which is really nice. So if you guys are getting this as a gift idea, ooh, squishers. Those look like, what could we use those for? Favorite part. Tires? <clears throat> Garbage? No? Camera crew and I don't always see eye to eye. Okay, so a little transmitter. This one's fixed, so this must be a mode two, which is what we generally do. Oh, it's also fixed. Okay, so there's a power button. It's got a spring return. One, two, three, four buttons. Clicker button, clicker button. Don't know that there's anything there. Looks like fake dual antenna. Then maybe there's actual dual antennas. I kind of doubt it. And it looks like we have four spare props here. So that's really nice. Then there's another box inside of here, which you'd be able to tell if you were holding it, it's pretty heavy. Uh, yeah, it does come out either end. I could have probably just taken the other end opened. Okay, so inside of this box, we've got, uh, and yes, there is a screw, a Phillips screw here. Looks like probably a number one or number two would work. You could use a coin if you don't have a screwdriver but you don't need to. Oh yes, finally they did a different colored screwdriver. China oh, has good. been upgrading for us. Thank you, China. Now we can tell the difference. Now we can, well actually yeah. it's gonna be nice because we always have trouble finding the proper Chinese screwdriver. Right. Let's go ahead and see if this works. Oh yeah, it does. Awesome. You know, when I was a kid, why didn't they have screwdrivers included in all the toys that they locked us out of? Because they didn't lock us out of toys when we were kids. Yeah, they did. I did? Yeah, I had like fire engines and I remember specifically one. Okay, so it takes four double A's here, it looks like. So one, two, three, four, not included anywhere that I can see. So this is a ready to fly drone, but what? It came with two chargers. What? That's awesome, actually. I'm really happy about that, but I'm very unhappy about this weird connector. Why do they have to use a proprietary connector? And that's some thick lines. Ooh, these are two S packs. 700 milliamp hour. Nope, it's 3.8, it's just two 300s in parallel. Okay, so this is keyed, it'll only go one way. Let's confirm that, okay, there's one way. And yep, it only goes one way. Okay, so let's get this plugged in. We're gonna find a USB plug. And it looks like I had three batteries, one inside of the aircraft, and then two chargers and two batteries, which is really nice if you've got kids that are fighting over these things. So let's just go ahead and get a generic run of the mill, everyday charger. I'll get two different sizes. These ones are, looks like these are from Wise Cams. Okay, so they charge, uh, they put out about two, five volts at 2000 milliamp hours, that's a lot. 
Then this is from an Asus tablet, and you can look on here and it says 5.2 volts at 1.35 amps. So this one produces a little bit less wattage than this one from the same AC wall outlet. So we're just gonna plug them in here. And then we'll get these things plugged in and we'll see kinda, I mean, they should charge. Usually we get about a half an hour to an hour on charges for these things. This is a USB-A connector. So we plug it in, it's got a red light that lights up. Okay, we'll just leave that right there. Um, notice that this is a hard surface, this is granite in our case. And uh, for safety reasons, good idea to try to charge these. They've got these really nicely tied, but I wanna untie this and make it a little easier to work with. But it is nice that it's really tidy. Mm -hmm. So that's how long the cable is. So should be of major concern, I would imagine, for most people's application. Okay, so we're gonna plug this in without a battery. There's no light that comes on. And then you can see, if you look real close, there's this plastic bridge between the two conductors. And that's how you can tell what direction it goes. And you can just guess and check too. Okay, plug it in, light comes on. on. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna let those charge. Now, if you have a wall plug like this that has higher output in terms of uh, milliamps, because this one's 2000 milliamps, that's greater than 1.35 amps because milliamps means one thousandth of an amp. So just put a decimal place after the whole number. So 2.00 is the same in compared to the 1.350, okay? So this produces more, but this produces it at five volts and this one produces it at 5.2 volts. So there's actually more wattage. Watt is a measure of power. Milliamps is a measure of current and voltage between those three parameters, we can calculate the wattage. So there's more wattage on this because 2000 times 0.5 compared to uh, 5.2 times 1.35. So anyway, there's your math lesson for the day on Brian Phillips RC here. All right, so now the next thing you're gonna have to do for setup, we're gonna, sh this is what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. Um, we show unbox, build, radio setup, and then the flight usually precedes all of that, even though, you know, in real life, we're gonna fly this at the end. <laughs> but people don't like watching all this, um, at least most of you don't, and that's fine. We do this so that you can see, you know, like, if, is this gonna be good for the grandkids? Is this gonna be good for the kids? Is this gonna be good for the neighbor kid? W whatever it happens to be. So we understand as you're picking your gift ideas and things like this, we know you don't wanna, you know, spend the kind of money. Some of these things are expensive anymore, and uh, we wanna give you a good representation of what you're gonna get out of the box, and, um, you know, we kind of take a no BS approach to this so that you can judge whether or not you want to buy these things. If you do decide to buy them, check the links in the video description below. Basically what that does is if you follow them, they know that you watch this video and then they'll give us a small commission. So we're affiliated with these different companies. Actually, in this case, it's just through Amazon. So follow the link down below, you'll help support us. And if you don't maybe like this product, we review tons of other products. So there's lots of choices and different ways that you can support our channel uh, by buying from the links, like you know, pretty much any of these planes or helicopters that you see in the background. We're always filming new, new planes and we literally have thousands of videos. So if this doesn't trip your trigger, I guarantee you, if you peruse the channel, you'll be able to find something. If you like F-15s, search in the search bar, F-15. If you like F-16s, search and just go to my channel, click on my face, It'll bring up a search bar that's off, I think it's on the lower right hand side or your lower right hand side over here. And uh, you'll be able to very easily search for anything we have on this channel, like this air, you know, the airplane on the table here. This is a Boeing 737 MAX 9. And if you didn't know what that was, you could probably search for airliners and it would come up or, you know, these 400 millimeter warbirds, these are super fun. And then of course we've got UMX planes, ultra micro extreme planes. You know, we've got Ishin products here. These are helicopters, of course. This is um, a Blade 230, which is a Horizon product. So we cover a bunch of different major brands. And then of course, some of the less major brands like Lulin. So we're really excited to bring these things to you. And we know that when you're making your gift decisions, you don't wanna end up with a dud. So if you're gonna end up with a dud, you might as well watch Brian end up with a dud. And then you can put your money toward something that isn't a dud. So without further ado, we're gonna pause, grab some batteries, come back and finish this. 
Okay, so we're gonna put the batteries in this and Megan and I were talking off camera or grabbing these things. And if you guys don't already know, if you're not familiar with Brian Phillips RC, which is what we call our channel, it's a super unique creative name we came up with that is based on my name. <laughs> Based, um, on, based on my name. name. It's very based. It's, <laughs> it's loosely based on my name, which is Brian Phillips. <laughs> um, if you guys haven't actually watched anything on the channel before you're new to the channel, we just wanted to let you know that what we do here is we review radio controlled aircraft predominantly. We review other things too that have to do with facilitation of a lifestyle of um, extreme RC lifestyle. That's why we have a runway in the country and we're building another runway for real planes. So we just love aviation. And, um, and when I say we, I mean I do, and my wife tolerates all these things. <laughs> so I'm very lucky. So I'm a lot like you, you may have not even noticed. Um, but basically what we do is we review these things and then you guys can kind of make good decisions on your gift ideas. But really, ordinarily, we don't do as many toy grade items like this, but we do toy grade items, especially when people might be interested in buying them. And there's so many on the market right now, it's really hard to pick. So what we're gonna do is just uh, double check these batteries. And as I mentioned, there are three batteries in this kit. And so if you grab, see how this folds opened? It doesn't really come off. So there is a screw, it looks like maybe, that holds this lid on. So I think you could hypothetically take that off. But I just wanna show you that that's flexible plastic. And that gets you to the battery. Okay, so because I was complaining about this battery earlier and I don't know if, if you guys aren't really super familiar with batteries in the hobby, uh, this, is, this is an Aeros brand, 14.8 uh, volts at 35C, 3300 milliamp hours. This is a 700 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery. It's comprised of two 300 milliamp hour batteries that are in parallel, so the positives are together and the negatives are together so it makes it last longer. This is 3,300 milliamp hours and it's 4S. We know that from the voltage. So there's four cells that are in here, just like this. They would look just like this, except bigger, okay? So this again is 700, so it'd be 350 milliamp hours each and they just add those together. This is 3,300, but it's still 3,300 because we don't run them in parallel Otherwise that'd be 3,300 times four, and then it would be a one S pack, one cell in series. That's very confusing to people when they first get in. This is a one S pack, but it's actually two cells that are in parallel. So it's a one S pack. Does that make sense? It does. Okay, if it's... you're not thoroughly confused, the difference between milliamp hours and voltage is the voltage has to do with the number of cells, the speed by which the motor will rotate and different factors. But the milliamp hours has to do with how long you're gonna be able to fly an aircraft. Because the aircraft is gonna fly, many times like airplanes like this would fly on two, or excuse me, on three or four S. This plane flies on three S. And this plane flies on one S. That plane flies on three S. That helicopter flies on three S. That helicopter flies on three S. So it just depends on the size class. And then we typically review up to 6S so far. We have had some uh, one-off planes that we ran on 5S, it's a weird scenario. But this has 7,000 milliamp hours and there's six of them in series. So that means you add the voltage of each of these cells. In this case, the nominal voltage is 3.8 uh, volts when discharged or 4.2 volts when charged. And lithium polymer packs discharge from about 4.2 to about 3.3 on the low end. You can run them lower, but then it drops off really quick and the chemistry becomes unstable and there's some safety concerns if you drop the voltage too low. So most of these toy grade products are gonna protect you from doing that with a low voltage cutoff. So when we talk about that when we're flying, what that means is that you have consumed enough power to actually get the plane to a state where it can no longer run the motor and it will many times protect itself from over discharging this battery. So again, if you're still watching this video, we assume you're probably into this and you're kind of geeking out on these uh, techno beats we're spinning. <coughs> yeah, that was really dorky. So you see that? I just turned it on too. So there's a flashing red light. 
Okay. It does beep. That's kind of nice. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to use this spent battery and we're going to see what type of life we can get out of it real quick just to get it in the air. But now that we've had an elaborate explanation of, well, why don't we just switch one of these? Just switch this one because it's got the higher current. So current, voltage, milliamp hours, milliamp hours is a rate, milliamps is a measure, a, st a stated measurement. Milliamp hours is a stated measurement of time and voltage, or time and current, and consumption of power over time. I'm trying to figure out if that's supposed to be tucked in. Looks in like it's, out? yeah, it's tucked okay. in. Okay, so we're gonna plug this in first. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't plug in an aircraft first, but there is a power button on it, okay? So I'm gonna plug it in. I'm gonna pull that little lead back, and I think that goes, yep, so that's the way that goes. That snaps back. It's pretty flexible, actually. So the other thing too is camera crew, if you want to grab that and just squish. Oh See, yeah. It's kind it's of really like, flexible. it's squishy, yeah. it's flexible. It's maybe got a little bit of give to it, which is great for a drone that uh, kids might be flying around your living room. Okay, so we're gonna turn this on now. Then we're gonna turn this on. Okay, it's waking up. You'll note there's two green lights and two red lights. Now I'm gonna turn this back off. I'm gonna turn this on. So then generally you have to arm. There's your throttle up. Throttle down, this is throttle up, throttle down. Yaw left, yaw right, lean forward, lean back, lean right, lean left. Okay, so I'm gonna try to take off. Okay, so I pressed the up button and it woke it up. There you go, okay. So the red goes forward, the left leans left, the right leans right, the back pulls it back towards you, and you'll note that the red is going away from me so I can focus on the green lights being my directional. That's what direction I want to face toward me. Really, really easy flying. I think there's a way to change our rates. I'm gonna try that now. Okay, so that, oh, that's probably the one touch landing. Okay, so all I did was I pressed this button here. So there's two triggers, one and two for the right hand and one and two for the left hand. So I'm gonna take off with a one-touch takeoff. As you can see, our cat's quite interested in this. Just remember the red is forward. So as you push it forward, it goes forward. And then I'm gonna go ahead and try this second button, the trigger that's on the right, but it's on the bottom. Don't know if it did anything. Now I'm gonna try the trigger on the upper left, which is over here. That went to a double beep. I don't know what that means. And another double beep, didn't seem to have any activity from that. There's how we yaw the aircraft. Then of course throttles on the same shared control stick. This is a mode two transmitter, meaning that our throttle and yaw, that's spinning the aircraft like that. Then this is roll and this is pitch, okay? So everything so far is working. It looks like I'm probably gonna have to depress the stick to change you into a higher rate, meaning push through the stick straight down. Yep, see how much more it goes now? Okay, now I'm gonna press it again. Then it goes to the lower rates. You see how low that is? That'd be great for a kid. Because I'm moving the stick, that's all the way. Now, pressing it, and you see how much more advanced that is? Mm -hmm. See how much faster it goes? Then I can really start mixing up the controls and doing some fun stuff, going up and flying around obstructions like the lights. Really cool. And then still with the ability, woo, with the ability to one touch button land, I'm gonna just get it about where I want it to land. I'm gonna press the button, I'm gonna lay the controller down. I'm not even doing anything. The rubber feet really help set it down mm -hmm. nicely. Yeah, so it okay. doesn't bounce. So I want to trim this helicopter, but I don't know how to trim yet. So you notice it's walking away from me. I'm not giving any input. Now I'm going to give input. I'm going to fly toward myself. And I think I need to, yep, it stays in whatever mode it was after a one touch button, a uh, one touch landing. You see the cat? Yeah. I'm trying to tempt it. I'm trying to tempt the cat. His hair is all stuck up on his back. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, so 
Let's go ahead and do our least favorite task. Okay, let's say we're up here and we wanna land. I can bring the stick on my left hand and then hold it. And after a period of time, it will land, okay? If you don't use the one touch button, which if you're holding this controller, it's like this. So this is gonna lean the aircraft left and right, lean it forward and back, then this is gonna yaw it, so it's gonna spin flat, okay? Then this is gonna go up, this is gonna go down. These buttons, I haven't figured out what they do, and then this back button, I don't know what it does. But to change your rates, listen to the beeps. That's one beep is low rates, two beeps is high rates. High rates means that when you move the stick to the right, it's gonna go fully over or fully over as opposed to in low rates, one beep, it's gonna go slow. So it's gonna give less output. So let's go ahead and read the book and see what the book has to say about calibration procedure because as the drone was flying, it was flying away from me, okay? Mm. And we don't wanna have that, it's annoying and it's not as fun. But honestly, I can say that thing is really nice. You can definitely run into some stuff. We gotta try that too. Mm -hmm. Let's crash it a few times after we test some other features. Okay, so this manual is a really high quality manual. It looks like the English is probably okay. Um, drone accessories out of reach of children, okay. Use clean and soft, clean the product, okay. Pretty sure we're not gonna worry about cleaning. Uh, to avoid interference with air, tra air traffic control signals, avoid flying a drone within 5,000, don't even listen to that, that's not even true. That's not true, there's different rules right now, so just, just fly this thing inside and you don't even have to worry about it. Oh, and then by the way, we'll weigh this right now so you know the all up weight. The rule is 250 grams and below, and you pretty much all bets are off. Now, if you're close to an airport, go to know before you fly if you're in the North American regions. Find out what, what the, okay, so we got zeroed. Find out what the rules are. If you have a local jurisdiction that likes to really command and control your life, you might wanna look into the rules around your house and stuff. But just remember, everybody that sees a drone is gonna assume there's a camera and you're a peeping Tom. So if you live within that reality, then you'll be taken care of. Just, uh, you know, this thing doesn't even have a camera on it, but I guarantee you that's the first thing everybody's gonna ask about it. Okay, so there's 3D stunt, auto takeoff and landing. Right stick, long press will cause the drone to activate headless mode, short press, will cause the drone to change speed modes. Okay, so we already did the short presses. Uh, left stick, press to enter trim mode. Let the, let the stick, let the stick to exit the mode. What? I'll have to figure out how to do that. It's probably press. Is that what they mean, like yeah. let go? Yeah. That's what we mean Maybe. by it's probably pretty good English. Okay, so I'm gonna just flip this manual over here so it's out of the way. Right stick, long press. I want to see what um, what the tricks look like. So one touch, take off. That's pretty cool, okay? Now I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna do, um, make sure you get your orientation right because a drone looks the same on most sides. Okay, so I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna do a trick. You ready? Yep. So one touch and then the direction. Oh, that's cool. So you press and hold the lower trigger and then I'm gonna pull back on the right stick. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so now that they've seen what that looks like, can I watch your hands yeah. do the same thing? We're gonna thing? do it so it's all in camera, okay? Okay. Cool? Yep. So I'm pressing and holding whilst pointing the direction of the trick. That's really cool. And it does tricks in all directions. Now, a little bit of altitude is required for that, so get up in the air a little bit. And it doesn't keep doing it. It does it once and then that's it. Okay. okay, so let's work on trim mode now. Let's one touch button land. Just to show you, you can guide it down if you want still, but it will interrupt the landing, okay? So if you wanna land here, because I'm drifting back, you have to kind of time it or it's gonna land in your kitchen sink. Like so. <laughs> so if it lands in your kitchen sink, hopefully it's not full of dishes and water. But if not, you're fine. By the way, we've been flying this a long time. Yeah. So now, we're gonna be honest with you guys. We have seen a lot of drones over the years. A lot, a lot. And there's been a million that have been super fun and really simple. 
Um, so far, we've been real happy with Lulin. They're simple. They're not anything. They're going to be hard to fly. They're certainly not a lot of money. And you have to kind of put all this stuff into perspective because you can get a million cheap drones. But what we're going to do is we're going to show you what we like about this one. The geared motors means that you're going to get longer flight times and a little bit more torquey motors because you can gear up the performance of the motor. The bad thing about a geared motor is that you're going to run more revolutions to do the same work. Usually these things are direct drive. I also like the idea that this is going to keep hair and fuzz and stuff out of the drone. Okay. Also, you can see there's one, two, three, four, probably four screws. And then you're going to have to undo this entire cage to get those props replaced. So you're going to have to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So sometime around 2023, you can actually get your drone fixed. So yeah, that's one thing to keep in mind. Okay. So let's try the trim adjustment. So we left stick, press the stick to enter trim mode, let the stick to exit. Okay. So we're going to try this one touch takeoff. I don't know if we do this in the air. So now I'm going to get to altitude where I want to be. I've got the green facing me. So that's, that means I'm pointing it and easy to control it. So I'm pressing this. Okay. Pretty easy so far. I don't, I don't know how to, how to trim the yaw though. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Let's go on the same angle right here. So stay where you are. Okay. So what I'm going to do is see how it's drifting this way, press and hold this stick. And then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two. Whoops. I let go. So I exited the mode. See now it's walking this way. Now it's walking that way. Oh, now it's walking even. Now I can let go. So as you can see, I, I can just be right up in it in Enrique style. Pretty cool. Look at that. It knows I'm going up to get it. That is pretty cool right there. So can you like not run it into something because of that? I don't know. It seemed to be doing pretty good. I don't want to cut my fingers to demonstrate it. Now I'm not saying you couldn't knock this out of the sky cause you can, but that was pretty good guys. I mean, I whacked that thing down. Yeah. So now the cat's like, okay, my turn. Yeah. <laughs> so the barometer doesn't like the spin, but it's trying to maintain altitude now. Okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. So as you can see, very easy to fly, very easy to maneuver, very easy to do tricks. Now just keep in mind, if you do a trick from this, from this altitude, you're probably going to hit something. So I'll just demonstrate. It didn't quite have enough altitude to recover before it ran into this chair. Now let's show you what it looks like when you run into a TV screen. Now, of course we have a, a DLP TV. It's super new technology. Just kidding. High consequence here, guys. Look at this. So watch this. You just grab it right out of the sky. Now, typically speaking, when kids are handling this, their fingers are smaller and I could see them getting in here and getting cut. Okay. You would have to work pretty hard to do that. What is the noise I'm hearing? Do you hear that? I want to see if I can identify what that noise is. Do the props just move a little bit? Yeah, I think maybe that's part of it. Oh yeah. There's just play on the motor. Okay. On the motor shaft. Um, okay. So let's try, let's try launching this, um, in a different way. Okay. I'm going to do the one touch takeoff, but I'm going to throw it first and see what happens. Nothing. Okay. So it gets confused. So if you throw it like that, what I'd recommend you do is put it back on a flat surface and there may be a way to recalibrate the gyro inside of here. So we're going to try this again. Pretty much good. The trim flight, the trim mode works really nice though. Cause then you've got less buttons to mess with and your hands are still on the sticks. 
So, and not only that, but have you noticed how long we've flown this? Like I didn't even charge. I know. Well, oh that God. battery was charged a little bit. For like oh, flashing. 10 minutes. Good. We're right on time. See, we have a flashing light. See, all four lights flash. And that's gonna tell you that your battery's getting low. Okay, so you can, you can land one of two ways again. Remember, I'm gonna show you this one more time. Camera crew. Let's show them on the sticks. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it back to where I am just so it's easy to see. And then I'm gonna just hold the stick down until it hits the ground and it will stop. Or you can take off and then you can just, wherever you're comfortable, let's say I wanna land from, say I wanna land from here, just press it and it'll bring it down. So it's really nice um, that we have the flexibility of that one touch takeoff, one touch landing. Uh, it's not really one touch you know, maneuvers. You have to press and hold this while moving the stick. But super impressed with all the performance of it. But that's fun, like for a kid to learn to yep. do tricks that they don't actually know. Now there's also yet. headless mode. We gotta look at that. Okay, so basically, what we're learning is that there's, our, our battery did just die, by the way. I'm sorry, we missed it because the camera crew had to pause the video. Um, so when it dies, it just keeps flashing until it's dead and then it just stops, essentially. So the motors, if you go out of range with this aircraft on uh, you know, your radio signal range, then what's gonna happen is the drone will slowly, it, it will go from high speed mode to low speed mode and it will just land slowly, okay? So that means run fast <laughs> and get back in radio and back into radio range and you'll be able to reacquire signal. Um, okay, so this is here, go ahead and feel that. What do you think? Not too warm. No. Uh -uh. So it. this one's off. So I don't know if that means it's fully charged or if that means that it like stopped, but I'm assuming it's fully charged. Now, typically you want to let these cool. I would say it's cool enough to go ahead and charge it, which is pretty awesome actually that they provide two chargers. Yeah. Honestly, the funny thing is, I think that the performance on this drone is maybe not tons better than other ones we've seen in the past. It may be a little bit lower performance on some of the capabilities in the high speed mode, but I love that there's two chargers. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal, because yep. come Christmas day, you're gonna want two chargers. And um, my experience with these drones, if you're anything like our family, you're gonna fly them like crazy for like about two days, and then you know the kids will occasionally whip them out and fly with them. Um, you know, and if you have more than one kid or a kid and a spouse, you're, you're probably, probably gonna need two. two. Yeah. Don't just get one. Yeah. That's like that's like punishment for the other one. And if you can sneak it open and charge the batteries ahead of time, that's a smart idea. I've done that too sometimes. Yeah, it works really nice that way if you can. But also, you know, it may not be as big a deal. But You've this is two pretty chargers. simple package though. It's not like blister pack that you have to cut open yeah. and ruin. You could open them. Okay, so turning this back on, I want to talk about one other thing too. The calibration for level, okay, so I was correct in my assessment. Down and then up on throttle arms it, or you can sticks down and in, we'll also arm it. Okay, so up and then down, or down and then up. Oh, sorry, power this on first, then the transmitter. Okay, down and then up. Up, then down, down. Or, let's do this again, I'll show you the other method. There's two methods. Okay, so on, then on, which again, it's a little bit goofy, sticks down and in is supposed to do it. Okay, so that doesn't work, so up and then down. So it looks like ours works on method one for arming. Um, then disarming, you can either hold the sticks down. Okay, so the motors are armed, motors are disarmed. Motors are armed, motors are disarmed, okay? Take off, motors are disarmed, it drops, okay? So if you need that thing to fall, then what you do is you get it over a surface, preferably. I'm gonna go into the high speed mode and then disarm. So you need to be aware if you hold these sticks down and in, which there's not a lot of times where you would do that in flight, it's gonna fall. So be aware of that. Okay, so then the other thing is on a flat level surface, you can hold these sticks down and over like this and it's gonna level calibrate. See how it flashed fast? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's see, and you'll note that it is now flying that way. So I'm gonna go into trim by using the left stick while holding it. I gotta fly away from the TV, sorry, that was me. Okay, so now I'm here. Bringing it back to us. 
How's your how's your image quality with that backdrop? Um, it's all right. Well, do you want me to be over here? So here we go. So I'm gonna click, and then lots of trim. Okay, remember, you can always fly back to yourself. Okay, so we're back to where we want to be, and then I'm just gonna click one. And remember, air currents in your house will cause that thing to move yeah. a little bit, but it won't cause, okay, it won't cause it to fly fast, okay? So I feel like that's maybe about as tight as you're gonna get it in this environment. Now, accident and collision avoidance can only be in the slow mode. So here's slow mode. So you see how slow it is? Let's see what happens. Whoa, that's cool. Okay, so in slow mode, it's like no soup for you. <laughs> you ready, camera crew? Put it in the camera. Okay. Trying. Oh, no, nope. it didn't. It's like no soup for you. Here we go. You were evidently out of the way, so it was okay with it, so I'm gonna lower it down. So you ready, camera crew? Yeah. All right, here we go. See, I'm Are you moving the stick. it back? No, the stick is fully pointed at you. See? Ah, oh, dang it. I got to point it at you. Okay, ready? Ah! So it's, it's yeah. pretty good. I mean, it's working. Now, let's let's do a wall. Let's do a wall. Oh, sorry. That's not me. That's the drone. So look, stick is fully forward. Okay, let's just uh, let's do that again so you guys can watch. Okay, so right here, fully into the wall. See? Now, a couple of, couple of things to watch out for is like this. See, it even missed that. That's yeah, pretty good. that's pretty good. And it's, it's quite easy. Let's try to crash into this thing. This thing looks like a good crashable. See, we ran into it, but even then it didn't hurt it, okay? Now let's try running into the ceiling. We have vaulted ceilings, so they're not flat here. Let's go in the hallway and try that first, okay? I'm gonna, oh, <laughs> Evidently, it didn't like the hallway. It didn't like the hallway? Nope, it was avoiding an accident with the hallway. So let's try this. Okay, here we go. Whoop. You know what it's doing? It must be avoiding, it must be avoiding the light. So I'm gonna walk out of the hallway. Whoa, <laughs> it's getting really thick but off now. With that rubberized. There's no damage. No. So let's take off from here and see. So the hallways, it gets kind of annoyed with the hallways. Yeah, because I think it's probably too close. It can't figure out where to go. So the accident avoidance. <laughs> it's just like going nuts, but it's not hurting anything. No. So I would say if you're nervous about your house. like It's actually great for that. Yeah. And this, see, we'll just drop it. Now, if you're upside down, don't try to take off. It'll be very confused. Yeah. All right, so we've learned that hallways don't work in low rates or low speed mode. So let's try it in higher speed mode. So I'm oh, gonna okay. take off from here. I'm gonna go out of the uh, low speed mode. Okay, so now I'm in the, the higher speed mode. Oh yeah, no problem at all. Just, just running it up and down the hallway, no problem at all. You wanna take a shot from out here so that people can see maybe the hallway a little bit better? So as you can see, it's just fine. That was me being a bad pilot, not the drone being a bad flyer. Okay, so let's do a trick. So cool. So can you do the tricks in the lower speed mode? Uh, yeah, let's try. Okay, so the lower speed mode is now on. Okay, so it's very slow. I don't know if you can. So that would only be like a high rate thing. It's only in the high rate mode, okay. which is fine, honestly, because it's really not that hard to switch and it still flies super easy. I mean, I'm still completely, I don't even have my controller. It's over on the other side of the room. And as you can see, it's just kind of up there hanging out, loitering in the spot. And then if I get like, what are you doing kids? You're not supposed to fly that in my study, whatever, you know? So all you have to do is take it out of the sky. Very, very good. 
artificial intelligence. Yeah. Um, and for this price point, I'm super pleased with the way this works. It's like all the things that we hated about drones when they first came out. Well, and we've seen other things with that collision avoidance. And they don't whatever, work. And it doesn't work <laughs> at all. That's... Well, and, you know, something like this light or something like this light, you're going to probably struggle. But, you know, like a ceiling fan, I think you'd get because it has to be enough material to change the lighting conditions enough for it to tell. I believe that's the way it's working. Oh. But super, super happy with it. You can see kind of where the sensors are located up here. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just really solid and it's strong and I've dropped it, what, like three or four times. Um, now, I always liked throwing the quad out and giving throttle. I don't, think, I don't think you can do that, but we'll try it. Nope, because it's automatically going to detect the, the change in state. don't like that. Okay, so the camera crew was moving the chair as I was trying to take oh. off, and I'm holding the stick down. So if you get in a situation where you're trapped in a weird environment, like underneath the edge of a chair or in some other strange circumstance, the best thing you could do is sticks down and in. So we're gonna try that again. That cat's eyes light up every time that noise starts. You wanna see a cat battle? This is our boy cat and he's, he's super nice. Oh, oh he good it. job. Cat won. Oh no, did you hurt it? Did you hurt my, my precious? All right, let's land it. Let's land it and reset. Let's land it. Okay. Did the cat actually kill it? That'd be so hilarious. Okay, he sticks down it. and in. We're gonna re-level it. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah, cat. See if you can get it again. So they didn't even know that they were selling a cat toy until today. <laughs> he's Are you, still kind of a chicken. Is it, yeah, he's a chicken. He's a nice chicken though. He's kind of trying to be friends with it. Wow, that was a good hit. Way to go, cat. Okay, so in, if your cat's hair sticks up like this, they're probably getting a little agitated, so we should probably <laughs> stop annoying him. But our, our cats love to, um, they love our airplanes, and sometimes they eat them, so just be aware of that if you have cats. Um, super happy with this. I mean, it really works good. Uh, just in looking through the rest of the manual, it talks about some different... Um, different modes that you can do. Headless mode is the only thing we haven't really looked at. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at headless mode now. When in headless mode, the forward direction may start deviating due to numerous crashes. Okay, so you remember how I was putting the sticks down and to the right? Well, down and to the left resets that. Now, uh, we want the green lights toward us right now. So down and to the right. Okay, so that has like a slower flash. So I'm gonna take off with a one touch button. Okay, so we're like this. Now I'm gonna press and hold this. Okay, now it beeped. Now we're in headless mode, evidently, whatever that means. So headless mode is gonna be irrespective of the direction of the actual lights. It's gonna move, like let's show the people the difference. So watch the sticks. I'll try to keep it in frame. See how it moves forward, backward, left and right, left and right, forward, backward. And really that's all it is, is it's like a super simple mode. See, like no matter what direction it is pointing, it just moves like it's always going to go that way. So no matter what direction it is, it's going to go that way. So See? it doesn't care which is the green. It doesn't matter. Or, okay. Yep. That's called headless mode, meaning it doesn't have a heading based on the aircraft's position. Your, it's just your stick position. It's just your stick position. Uh, okay. okay? So then land is, everything is exactly the same. Kill the motors, exactly the same. The only difference is when in headless mode, you're kind of like, it doesn't, it doesn't consider this the heading, okay? It considers the heading only respective of your sticks, okay? So it's respective of the pilot. Um, I don't like headless mode, so I'm gonna turn it off by pressing and holding this. There is a slow flash when you're in headless mode, okay? So now taking back off, 
As you can see, we're back to regular mode. If you're a drone pilot that wants to become an aircraft pilot, okay? Meaning you're practicing flying airplanes with drones, which is actually a very, a very, it is a very good way to learn, by the way, because you can do this in real life, in real space, and simulators are nice, but they're not great for some aspects of flight performance. Um, they tend to make things either easy or excessively weird. Even the good flight simulators, like 9.5 from uh, Real Flight. Uh, this is great. I'm super happy with it. If you want to pretend like you're flying an airplane around your living room without actually flying a small airplane around your living room, this works great for that because you can actually take off, you can fly it, you can use the same coordinated controls as you would with an, air, an airplane. The only difference is you can stop if you run into trouble, whereas with an airplane you would have to keep moving no matter what. So you end up with many crashes. And crashes, of course, are annoying. If you're talking about a small indoor aircraft, which yes, they do exist, That does pretty dang good. Yeah. It's really fun. It's I like it. Do you want to try flying it, Cam Crew? Well, I was wondering if we should have you no. fly it. Not me. That is a great idea. No. Let's do that. I think we should have Ash fly it, the cat. Here we go. See, I've noticed it does get a little bit weird about landing sometimes. Like if you're close and you're still moving a lot, just bring it to the ground and then it doesn't always like to stop. So I'm gonna just kill it like that. And here's what I'm gonna do. To resolve that problem, I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna turn off the controller. I'm gonna turn the controller back on. Throttle up, throttle down, and it's ready to go. Okay, cam crew, you ready? She loves it when I have her fly. Okay, which is the one touch return to, or the landing? Super excited. This one? That one. Is this the? Yeah, right there. Okay, is yeah, that take off that. too? Yeah, that's take off and landing. Why don't you just try going straight up? It's super easy. I'm gonna go way back here so people can see <laughs> it's actually you. Okay, now just press the one touch landing. Okay, and just kind of guide it down. Yeah, okay. good job. Now try taking off. See if you can fly it back to yourself. Okay, wait, hold on. Just pull up, the down. stick back towards yourself. There you go. Just pull it back a little harder. And as you can see, the camera crew is a little bit less well-versed in flying, and I'm much, much less well-versed <laughs> in, in filming. filming. Okay. So if I want to go down, okay. Uh, yep, pull back on the stick and it'll bring that. it back to where you are. Okay. I can't keep both in picture there, camera crew. Oh, sorry. Was That's up. all right. Oh, I'm flashing. Uh -oh. I mean, the drone well, is flashing. Shoot, I pulled the camera away just in the wrong time. <laughs> okay, just now land it there and see if you can bring it down. Oh, I'm gonna miss the counter. Oh no, garbage can landing. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, what that do you is, think? I mean, if I can fly it, anybody can fly it. Okay. <laughs> Camera crew loves it when I put her on the spot. Mm -hmm. So favorite. without further ado, the Lulin, the Lulin X26, is that what this is, X26? The Lulin X26, they say ages 14 plus right here. I don't know why you would ever say 14 plus, probably because of laws and things, but uh, this, this would be totally fine for younger kids. Um, now, we don't, we don't do our videos for kids, but kids watch our videos a lot. Um, and that's just the way it goes. Really, we're talking to you parents. Um, we know what it's like to buy kids toys, and we know what they like. Um, any ground-based radio-controlled airplane you get your kids will be, used four or five times a year if you're lucky. If you get them a little flying plane like this or drone or helicopter or something like this, they're gonna enjoy it a lot. They're gonna use it a little bit more. 
Um, but it's like other aircraft. In our experience, what happens is they use them a few times, they kind of forget about them, and then they come back to them, they use them a little bit, they forget about them, then they use them a little bit later. And so that's been our experience. The biggest thing is, if you want to enjoy this for maximum potential fun, I would highly recommend just get two. They're really pretty inexpensive. And then also Lulin, we recently reviewed one for Lulin that was like a indoor, outdoor, sort of has a camera on it. It's, you know, it's okay. It's not great. The camera quality is low, but it's fun and it's very inexpensive. And it uses a cell phone. Uses a cell phone, yeah. which is nice. So really, really happy with this thing, the X26. I mean, we've obviously seen more sophisticated stuff on the market, but Lulin does a really good job of sending out a good ready to fly package. It's gonna have everything you need with the exception of the double A's for this in this case, which is four double A's. We buy the world's cheapest, crappiest double A's because we burn through like literally hundreds of them a year. Yeah. And uh, I would say with two chargers, that is huge. Like that's, for us, that's a deal breaker. Uh, it, if it doesn't come with a charger, forget it. Um, we have tons of chargers. I mean, tons of chargers. And the chargers we have are very expensive and very premium and they work very good. So I'm only annoyed on this because we don't have a proper JST style connector or a proper, I can show you the different uh, styles of connectors that we would ordinarily use on a 1S pack. As you can see, hundreds of batteries. This here, Molex style connectors are very popular. JST are very popular. Micro PH 2.0 and then the UM. Okay, UM, which is like a UMX 1S micro PH with a different pitch. They call it pitch, but I don't really understand that. I think it has to do with the, the you know, like how steep the spring loaded part is. I don't know, it doesn't matter. The point is the pins are different sizes and they speak to the pin size by using the word pitch. So sure. this charger works really good ordinarily and I would ordinarily basically x nay this charger as soon as we're done flying a, a plane or helicopter or airplane or quad uh, after the first use. So that's the way we do it. But the thing is we have access to this. This is a cheap thing. You can buy it for like 50 bucks, but you'd have to build an adapter yep. in order to do that. Now that is something too, if you guys are into hobby grade stuff like we are and you have tons of hobby grade chargers and you want to use a better charger so you can basically make this work faster. I'm gonna show you just how hard it would be to do that. Unplug this, take as long a lead as you want, cut it with scissors, separate the coaxial cable, solder your ends, make a JST end on one end, and there you've got your adapter and you can use that into perpetuity with your chargers. But what I would more than likely do is I'll keep one of these stock in case we run into another brand variety that likes to use this. And then I would, as I accumulate another two or three, I would make a parallel charger by taking two or three of these batteries. I would cut these, separate out the leads, solder them together, and then I would end up with this little pigtail that's got four or five different batteries. I can plug it into a larger, more robust charger, and then spin them, plug them in together, and parallel charge them. So if you don't know what parallel charging is, that's the sort of thing you'll find out here on Brian Phillips RC. We obviously wanna help you get the most bang for your RC bucks. Everybody has budgets, we understand that, but especially around Christmas time, if you're not into RC, but you're into learning about technology, batteries, propellers, pitch of props, motor currents, um, all the technology that goes into flight, we get into that stuff on this channel. Sometimes it's a little bit in the weeds for people that are new, but our experience has been, if you're new at this hobby, there is a lot to learn, and it is hard to just fall into it. You have to spend some time and effort uh, getting from where you are now, which is probably knowing less than you'd like to where you'd like to be, which is knowing uh, something consistent with where we are and we're always learning and we're always bringing that to the table too. So anyway, without further ado guys, if you wanna help support our channel, Brian Phillips RC, me and my wife and the family, we've got four kids. We live on this property here in the country and we love flying. We review things like this as you can show them quick before we wrap up the wind is blowing hard today. Yes. It is cold outside. It is definitely not a good day to film outside, but it is definitely also a great day to fly this little thing. So definitely pick one of those up. If you're even remotely interested, I'm sure the price point is gonna be very attractive to you. Check it out. We got links below. Lulin's been good to work with. 
This is a nice, high quality, high grade packaging. Be a great gift idea. I would mm -hmm. definitely order it yesterday if you want it for Christmas. If you get it early, that's great. But if you get it late, that's gonna be a major problem for you. So get them coming early. And if you see something else later that you also want and you're like, ah, but I already spent my budget, maybe just expand the budget just a little bit. That's what I would do. All right, guys, that's all we got for you today. Thanks for watching. We're gonna sign out now. Uh, we hope that you learned a little something from this video and we have so much coming. I mean, we've got like piles of boxes of things to unbox, build and radio set up for you. And we hope that you'll come along for the ride. Thanks for watching.